Hello everyone, welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel and this one is going down the Teaching Astronomy Online Tools and Tips and I'm super happy to have Andrew Fracknoy with us today. Hi Andrew. Hello, good morning Frank. How are you today? Good, well as good as anyone can be expected under these bizarre circumstances, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we just got noticed yesterday, or uh, today, depending on your sleeping habits, um, that ASU, we are going forward, ASU is going to go open mostly online. There will be a limited number of, of in-persons, it has to be approved and all that. Uh, but ASU has developed sort of an in-house testing procedure. Um, so I'm actually going at six o'clock tomorrow morning to go get my saliva tested for active, uh, active virus, which I hope is negative. I think it's negative. Um, so where are you at? Well, I, I teach uh, retired people in two programs at universities in San Francisco, and both of those organs, because of the audience we serve, are going to be online. So I'm, I'm scheduled to teach two classes in the fall, but they'll both be online. Cool. Cool. That is one awesome bookshelf you have behind you. <laughs> yes. For, for a long time, I did book reviews, and so I've accumulated what my wife thinks is more than my share of astronomy. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, we're going to be talking about one of those today, I imagine. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get into it. And for while you get set up and share the screen, I will just let people know that um, uh, Chris Impey and I did a session on textbooks for teaching astronomy online. And we mentioned the OpenStax astronomy uh, textbook. It's an OER. It's an open educational resource. And um, Andrew is the lead author on this textbook, and so I'm super happy to be able to um, present this. So Andrew, take it away. Well, thank you, Frank, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk to AAS members and other viewers about uh, what is a, a quite a project. Um, the The project is a nonprofit uh, publisher, essentially headquartered at Rice University, and through support from major foundations such as the Gates Foundation and the Hewlett Foundation, uh, they have as their goal to produce a high quality, professionally edited textbook for every introductory course that students take in the first two years of college. Cool. Uh, they're quite a ways along on this, but certainly not finished. There are books in both uh, scientific and mathematical fields and also in the social sciences. And uh, we were very lucky to be asked to help with the astronomy book. The, the books all have very original titles. They're just called the subject <laughs> that they cover. So our book is called Astronomy. Um, and I'll mention the website again at, at the end, but it's completely free like all the other books. And not only is it free, but it's open source. So you can adopt any part of it, uh, make any part of any chapter uh, assignable, or even segregate those sections you want to teach in a special uh, publication that you can set up. So uh, it's, it's this, this project has been going on for a while, and uh, our book came along after they pretty well established how to do things. Mm -hmm. And so we worked with a team of editors. By we, I mean the three senior authors, uh, Sidney Wolf, who's a former president of the AAS, and uh, David Morrison, a, a well-known uh, planetary astronomer, and, and I had been working on textbooks uh, for commercial publishers. And so we were very glad to, to help put this mm -hmm. together. But uh, the whole aim of this is to produce a community. So even the writing of the textbook was a community effort. Uh, we had help from about 70 colleagues, uh, wow. some of them in updating, and some of them to review the text and the jokes to make sure that they were appropriate for uh, the kind of non-science majors teaching that so many of us do in our Astro 101 classes. Uh, mm -hmm. So among the people who helped us was Deborah Fisher, uh, on exoplanets, which is a very fast-changing field, as everyone knows. Uh, Heidi Hamill on the outer planets, uh, and uh, Lloyd Knox, uh, a young cosmologist, to help us with the uh, cosmology chapters. And the, the upshot of this community working together is that we got a lot of really excellent advice on 
how to make things more readable, how to make things uh, better connected with resources. Because uh, as you might imagine, Frank, that when you have an electronic textbook, you can connect directly out of the textbook to videos, to simulations, uh, to websites, et cetera. And we put uh, quite a bit of effort into that connectivity as part of the free textbook. Um, the other thing that's really exciting, having been a textbook author for years, every time you made a new edition, yes. it was a cosmic moral crisis, right? <laughs> do, you, do you want to make a new edition and make all these poor students pay the new book price? Goodness gracious. On the other hand, there's so much new material after a while in astronomy, you feel an obligation to update many chapters. Well, this, this moral dilemma simply fell away with all electronic publishing. Uh, we actually update the book every year. We can update it instantly if there's a big development, but we update the book nice. every year because we're only disturbing electrons. We're not killing trees or demanding extra money from students. And, Very nice. Yes, That's I think the, the OER is outstanding. And uh, in fact, I use it in my uh, Introduction to Solar Systems course. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, uh, the, the issue of textbook costs has been a, a, a difficult one. Um, and many people who teach at the community college level and at the state level um, have grappled with this issue that, the, that for reasons that are complicated, textbook costs are, are rising much more quickly than uh, many other costs in our society. And so particularly people who have students who are not in the top economic uh, strata of our country have been waiting for a long time to have a book like this and we were glad to have it finished. Um, we made a big effort to write the book, as I mentioned, in everyday language with as little jargon as possible. And we have uh, carefully defined all the terms. There's a, there's a glossary that you can jump to that, 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 that helps you with any terms that are not second nature to non-science majors. Uh, we've also tried to include uh, touches of humor. This is actually a NASA cartoon, which is in the public domain uh, about not dark matter cereal. And wherever possible, we've tried to put in a little bit of humor, uh, which I think helps non-science majors get adjusted to a topic like astronomy. Um, the good news is that as of this month, we have about 900 instructors around the country uh, so we've had a lot of people experienced with the book, and you can probably find colleagues even in your area who have used it. Uh, over 350,000 students have used it. We only have that number because we ask instructors to register. And so then I know there are non-registered instructors. It doesn't cost anything to register, but uh, there are always people who don't like to be in any kind of registry. So at least 350,000 students have used it. It's also just free on the web to anyone. And so we have no idea how many people are using it other than that. But we calculate that we've saved more than $25 million just with this astronomy book. Remind, um, me, I, remind me of the year of when it first came out. Yeah, so it came out uh, about three years ago. Okay. Uh, 2018 or so. Okay. Um, and, uh, and it's right. been growing. At first, people needed to hear of it. Uh, but now I think we've, we've, we've uh, had enough adopters that word is starting to spread. And then uh, it's in places like ResearchGate where I, they record readers. So we know that 60,000 plus readers have looked at it. These are mostly people from outside the country who just need a, an astronomy book for some reason or yep. another. Um, recently, we added a multiple choice question bank with uh, 1,100 questions. Nice. Uh, many of them requiring not just the regurgitation of facts, but actually applying what you've learned to a new situation. Uh, many have a humorous choice added to it. Um, and so that's, that's been helpful and that's available to registered adopters. Uh, we, we, uh, you have to register, the registration is free, but we do ask people if you're using the book, not to publish the questions or the answers on the open web, so that the community continue to have this test bank. Uh, I have two comments on that. Two comments, sure. if you wanna go back one slide. Uh, number one is anybody who's ever uh, designed their own question banks uh, 
coming up with quality distractors is a lot of work. Um, and so I can really appreciate having 1,100 questions that will have some quality distractors to them. So this is a, this is a fantastic addition. Uh, and to, to get to your second point, um, yeah, it's not just uh, instructors who might post stuff on the web, but uh, in these days, it's usually true that in your syllabus, your provost have something about saying this is copyrighted material, you're not allowed to put it up, because otherwise these things show up on various sites um, that I won't even mention by name <laughs> that are well-known cheating sites. Um, that's so. right. And I, when I talk in a minute, I'll talk about something else that's happening along those lines. But let, okay. me, let me get to that in a moment. So, um, uh, the, if I oh here it is. This is the slide. So we're working with a, uh, a partner to OpenStax called Expert TA, and have developed and it's almost ready a class management homework and quiz platform. Okay. which includes not only these multiple choice questions, uh, but an enhanced set of the numerical problems that are in the book, but with randomly varied values for some of the problems where you can have a variable in it so that two people sitting next to each other on a test might have a very different uh, uh, number to work with and a different answer, which is correct. And then also the beginning of a library of graphical questions, drag and drop, matching, ranking yep, yep. and sorting questions. Yep. And, and this it gets back to the point you just made, Frank. Expert TA has a good relationship with many of those cheating sites. They actually have a, robot, a robotic kind of uh, uh, warning system that tells them when uh, something has been put up on those sites. Nice. And then they uh, immediately work with those sites to, to get them taken down. So uh, there will be some help with that as we go along. So, so when, you say, when you say ready August 2020 here, uh, I know, for example, I'm starting up uh, my intro solar systems course on August 20th. So do we have a little finer granularity there on August 2020? I, I this is you're catching me in the middle of the last little bit of effort to get it done. But yes, I would say by mid August, it will be ready. Awesome. It will be ready. Awesome. Okay. So um, in addition, as you kindly mentioned at the beginning, this is part of a whole movement nationally to have open education resources. And there is something called the OER Commons where you can deposit such open education resources and connect them to a book like uh, Astronomy by OpenStax. And so we have a hub, what's called an OER hub for the book, which is accessible from the instructor resources menu on the textbook website and you can go to that hub and we've deposited a variety of what what textbook publishers called ancillary materials right. to go with the book so for example there is a new list just fun finished this year of short videos that can be used with each chapter especially if you're doing uh, online you may want to have a little video in addition to a to a, a lecture posted uh, and so we've selected uh, several hundred videos that are less than 10 minutes that uh, particularly cover one topic uh, in the textbook. There's also a, a catalog of free lab activities that colleagues around the world have put up on the web. And again, it's organized by topic. Uh, for those new to astronomy teaching, we put together a list of where you get good astronomy images. Um, We've put together a guide to the astronomy of many cultures. There are sample syllabi. Uh, there's a very nice guide that David Booning put together about how to use the free Stellarium software, which is a planetarium software that's also open source and you can use with your class. And he's also put together for us a very nice primer. If you're teaching your first course, what do you need to have? What are the things you'll regret not having put on your syllabus, <laughs> et cetera. So that's Very something for, for, for beginners to check out. Again, all these resources are completely free uh, yep. for you to use. Um, I've spent quite a bit of time putting together two resources that are uh, perhaps especially timely. A uh, guide to the role of women in astronomy, which includes both uh, material about the issues that face women, that faced them in the past and continue to face them, 
and then also specific resources on the work and challenges of women of the past and women today. And so uh, if, you are, if you are so inclined and you want to make sure that in your class you cover not just a dead white European men, but, but a my, much more diverse group of people, that's one resource that you can use. Uh, similarly, just this month, I finished a uh, Black Lives in Astronomy guide, uh, which allows you to, to hear from uh, the Black uh, members of the astronomical community and, and to be able to show not only some of their work, but some very poignant uh, uh, videos that they've made about the challenges they face. So if you want to be contributing to the, to the Black Lives movement, this is a way that we astronomers can also be part of that. Yeah, I saw an announcement of that in the last uh, AAS emailing that went out about two, three days ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for some of us who are science fiction fans, um, I've put together a guide to science fiction stories with good astronomy, but that'll be a topic for our next video. Mm -hmm. so I, I'm not going to be uh, dwelling on that. Uh, I should mention just in, in closing that uh, OpenStax uh, continues to get funding from these foundations, which is very nice. And so they've been able to put together an app for phones and tablets where you can download the book to your phone and then continue working on it even when you're out of Wi-Fi range. And this is especially important uh, for students who are not immediately connected at home to good Wi-Fi. They can have the textbook and the things that go with it uh, downloaded and uh, work on their own. So apparently this was quite popular. The, the first three weeks, they had 100,000 downloads sure. of, this, of this free app. My, this too is absolutely free. So that's the, the story I wanted to tell that um, there is this textbook available. This is not meant in any way to denigrate the wonderful textbooks that our colleagues have put together, many of them with very sophisticated materials that certainly you should look at those. But if for financial or other reasons you need a free textbook, uh, this is something that, that the community now has available to it. And there's the website that you go to, uh, uh, if, you want to if you want to check it out and begin to work with it. Very thank cool. you for letting me talk about that. Well, thank you, Andrew, for sharing it. Of course, anybody who knows anything about me knows that I'm a big proponent of free open source with a knowledge software. Uh, and mm -hmm. so this goes right along with that movement of uh, transparency. So that was really cool. Um, we are going to be doing, so first of all, I just want to say, I think some of the new stuff that you've got coming on, the test banks, the, the ancillary material, et cetera, that's all new. That's really cool. Um, I think this will help drive, drive some adoption, the, the, the mobile phone apps, all that's really cool. So we're going to be doing two of these. Uh, and as Andrew mentioned, uh, we're going to be doing one more, uh, which will have some different material in it. And we'll be posting these up uh, probably very soon in order to get the uh, um, people coming in teaching this fall. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Andrew. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.